G'day guys, I'm Average Dom Slim, and I have a new plant, welcome to the show, and a new hat, which I literally can't take off because I have something called hair hat, which is when your hair looks like you've been wearing a hat. Anyway, this is what I wish I knew as a beginner runner, which are the things that I wish I had understood and appreciated at the beginning of my running journey. And I hope by sharing these with you, it'll help shape a beautiful, fruitful, and unique running journey for you. If you like what you see, then please consider subscribing, which is actually over here underneath the plant somewhere. So number one is don't compare yourself to others. Now, I know that's easier to say than it is to do, but nobody is watching you. Nobody cares how fast or how slow you are running. We're all so different. Body type, age, experience, environment, internal makeup, external mechanics, motivation, strength, desires. So unless you have an idea identical twin and that identical twin has the same lived experience as you do, then it's absolutely futile comparing yourself to anyone else. That said, if you do have a twin, that would probably be a really good way to measure your progress, but I digress. When I started running, I was comparing myself to people in my running group and they were running anywhere between 50 and 100 kilometers per week. I was also comparing myself to people my age, regardless of how long they had been running for. Your journey in running is such a personal journey. You're a gosh darn individual and your trajectory is going to be unique. That's fun, that's amazing. So be free of comparison with others. Be free of that perceived judgment. Focus on your journey and try to get as much out of your experience as you can. Community is everything. Now, for years, I saw running as a completely individual sport. Something I would do to be alone, be by myself, and just find peace in it all. Now, the important thing is that you don't lose that when you find your running community. You can run by yourself whenever you want, and I still do, for those exact reasons. But there is something special you gain. You gain belonging, camaraderie, the knowledge and experience of others, friendship, motivation, inspiration, encouragement, and you gain people who literally won't stop talking on a long run, but it's a beautiful distraction because you've been running for two hours and your legs are killing you. Now the running community is just a broad term and it comes in all different shapes and sizes. For me, this is the running group that I train with. It's also individual running friends. It's my family and my partner that I also run with. It's the global running community that I connect with through YouTube and Instagram. And it's the local community that I run local races with. So find a group, find your running people. And if that running group is a little weird, like all the guys like to take their shirts off or the group leader tries to pair people up like it's a, a dating show and you're not into that, then find another running group. There's plenty of them out there. But it feels great to make running a team thing. Now this is another hard one to master, but try to focus on feeling good rather than chasing PBs. Running is hard at the beginning. Uh, running is sometimes still hard for me now. But more importantly, running should be fun. The fantastic thing about it is it's so versatile. You can run on a desert or in the forest or on a beach. You can run slow, short, fast, long, up, down, for all I care. With friends, by yourself, listen to music or a podcast or the Game of Thrones soundtrack. Whatever you like, but keep trying new things in running until you find a way where you enjoy it as a sport. And once you enjoy it, once you're having fun and you want to get out there and run, you're going to start improving for sure. Now, do not worry about the running gear. Now, let me cover shoes separately because that's the next point, but I'm talking about all the other stuff. 
the shorts, the tops, the hats, the vests, whatever else. I know Instagram is absolutely stacked with this sort of stuff. And if it makes you feel good, if you want to buy a new outfit, then fantastic, go for it. But don't feel pressured by trying to look good while you run. So if you want to wear an NBA jersey of a team that you don't even support and a, a cat that your sister found at a vintage store and you feel comfortable in it, then go for it. Buying all this fashionable gear is not going to make you a better runner. Running is not about looking good, my dudes. It's about feeling. Now do invest in a good pair of shoes. By that, I don't necessarily mean go buy the Alpha Fly 3s because they look sexy. I mean, go get fitted, buy a shoe store and find the right shoes for you. If you're on the Gold Coast, go to the running shop. They will find the shoes that are perfect for you. See, this is where your sport shoes from grade 12 are just not gonna cut it anymore. Shoes have gotten so good these days, so comfortable and so protective of your feet. So if you're starting to run a lot, I'm talking four, five days a week especially, then you probably need to introduce a shoe rotation. This is something that I wish I'd appreciated sooner. A shoe rotation is having multiple pairs of shoes. That might be multiple pairs of shoes just for easy runs, a pair of shoes for long runs, and maybe a separate pair of shoes for sessions or races. This is gonna make your shoes last longer and protect you from injuries. So run slowly. New runners can often fall into the trap of simply running too fast. I'm talking for easy runs, recovery runs, long runs. If you do a 5K or a 10K in training, these should be nowhere near your PB. In fact, you should be running at least a minute per kilometer slower than your PB time. Now, I always suggest using this calculator. I love it. You can pop in one of your PBs and it will tell you the pace that you should be training at, plus a bunch of other cool information. Now, if you're super, super new to running and you don't have PBs to draw upon, then your heart rate and how you feel are gonna be the indicators to draw upon to make sure that you're running slow enough. Too slow is better at the start. So if you're gonna preference one, preference running slower rather than faster. What you wanna emphasize is running slow enough to get through whole runs unscathed and without stopping. And then you can work on getting your heart rate down. Save your fast running for your speed sessions because that is what they're for. So think about food. For my entire first marathon training block back in 2019, I didn't use gels. I'm talking on my 30 kilometer, 32 kilometer long runs, I didn't eat anything. I didn't even drink water, if you can believe it. So start thinking about fueling early on in your running journey. In particular, that is how you fuel around your running, particularly sessions and long runs. Make sure that you're eating pre-run and post-run. I'm also talking about how you fuel mid-run during your long runs. And while you're training, this can be gels, this can be apricot bites or snake lollies or a bowl of wheat bix, whatever you like on the go to make sure that you're feeling good in those long runs. If you're running say 90 minutes or more, then you should be eating during that run. And always be hydrating, right? Throughout the day, on your runs, replenishing electrolytes, so important. Last one, remember that there's so much more to life than running. Now, I don't know if people who are watching my videos actually wanna hear that. Running can feel like it's become everything. It can become obsessive and all-consuming, and for a while, that's fantastic. You wanna go all in on something, but life, it's so big. It's so vast in its diversity of offerings. You can't let your life, your identity hinge on a single thing because that thing can disappear or you can fall out of love with it or life can just go ahead and change on you. It tends to do that. It's like having a diversified portfolio. Now, here's some financial advice for you. And that's exactly what I did. And now I have 72 dollar dues to my name. Anyway, my point is, remember that you're an individual with nuance and individuality and uniqueness. Yeah, you're trying to run a half marathon and that's awesome. But remember you're also great at Pictionary and you've got your nipple pierced and 
you make a great lasagna and your football team sometimes wins and you can play chopsticks on the piano with your eyes closed and you've been to Machu Picchu and one time you knitted a scarf and sometimes you take out the neighbor's bin and your aunt Jezebel's favorite and you've done a wheelie before and you're a good person and that's cool man that's cool so if you don't do as well at that half marathon as you thought you were gonna do then don't worry that's just one thing So guys, that is everything that I wish I had known as a beginner runner. And I hope you can use those things to build this beautiful foundation for your beautiful running journey. Now this is what I call the triple whammy. Subscribe to my YouTube, follow me on Instagram, and follow me on Strava. Now I know that's a lot and it might seem a bit stalkerish, but I'm asking you to, so let's play on. I'm Average on Slim. Do the right thing and say hi to your Aunt Jezebel for me. See you next week, fam. Now I know it seemed a little bit callous that I just got this new plant without really honoring my previous plant. So here's a little tribute to the old fella. I send my regards to you, love. The seas that we sail were rough Cause those winds and those rains and those holes and those cannons we fought Were too much for you in the end Too much you thought I'm like a sycamore sea turning as a ball as a sea